Well, good afternoon, and thank you for coming out to attend our fourth year capstone uh, presentation. Uh, exoskeleton, 3D printable, nanocomposite orthopedics. My name is Jeff, this is Matt, and out attending our booth, we have Calvin and Ben. So as an introduction, uh, let's first talk about orthoses. Uh, an orthosis, or a orthopedic device, is a externally applied device used to modify the structure, or sorry, externally applied device used to modify the structural or functional characteristics of the neuromuscular uh, skeletal system. Orthoses provide uh, the relief of pain uh, to a variety of injuries, particularly at joints. Uh, their main purpose is to restrict the motion of the joint and reduce load bearing forces in order to allow continued functionality of the body. The main application uh, is for people uh, who are athletic, uh, those who are overweight, or the elderly. With such a high demand and such a, a varied application, uh, it is anticipated that the 2015 uh, US market will be around $1.4 billion. There are typically two kinds of orthopedics on the market today, the variable fit and the custom fit. A variable fit kind of takes the one size fits all approach. They have a application which has a selective fit and can be uh, adjusted to fit an intended user. Uh, alternatively, as the name would suggest, a custom fit orthopedic is custom tailored to uh, a specific user's contours. This allows for a more comfortable fit and is better for a application for extended wear. Having said this, there are a number of problems associated with the custom orthopedics. Uh, one being the expense and lead time associated with custom manufacturing techniques. Additionally, if any uh, small error is detected within the manufacturing process resulting in a uh, default in the product, this can result in the refabrication of the brace. Uh, so based on these deficiencies, there are a number of customer requirements which we have laid out. From the issues associated with current orthopedics, uh, we have derived that the product has to be durable and be able to support uh, extended wear. It must be thin, sleek, cost effective, and low weight. Uh, additionally, uh, as a user, we need to be able to offer a product which can be obtained in as short a time as possible from the initial point at which a need is demonstrated. We believe that this is best suited for uh, a 3D printing solution. 3D printing can reduce the, uh, the long lead time associated with the manufacturing of custom braces. This relatively new technology offer, offers a versatile application to produce custom designed components uh, with an ever expanding selection of materials. Additionally, we believe that 3D scanning is a complementary technology that can be used in order to uh, replicate desired objects. With 3D scanning's ability to translate uh, complex geometries uh, into 3D models, this technology ensures the capability of the brace to have contours specifically designed to the human limbs. This being said, there are a number of issues that we must address with 3D printing. One of the uh, major problems associated with 3D printing is the layer by layer deposition. While the project, uh, while the printing objective has lateral uh, continuous lateral continuity due to the motion of the print head. There is a discontinuity in the vertical direction which decreases the overall strength in this direction. Additionally, conventional 3D printing materials often suffer from poor mechanical properties and are restricted to a melt temperature of the 3D print printer being used. We believe that a suitable uh, fix for this is using composite technology. A composite is defined as a material com composed of multiple phases, each of which is contributing a non negligible contribution to its composition. In general, continuous phase, there's a continuous phase and there is a filler phase, the continuous being the bulk portion and the filler being the minor portion which is selected to contribute to the mechanical properties of the bulk. For our application, the most relevant uh, component of that filler uh, additive is its strength component. Nanoscale uh, nano filler creates a large interfacial area with the matrix material, even in low quantities. Uh, thus, by utilizing a high strength nano filler, 
mechanical properties of the matrix uh, may be enhanced. For this, it is clear that there is a potential uh, improvement on the 3D uh, printing platform. An, official co uh, an efficient composite uh, would have high compatible phase attributed to the intermolecular forces between them. This is determined by the respective chemical structures. With sufficient compatible components, any applied force may effectively be distributed between matrix and filler. Uh, additionally, uh, with rod structured particles, an arrangement either in the longitudinal or transverse direction uh, brings out unique effects. The mechanical properties of the filler can either be found in either an isostress or an isostrain condition, uh, affecting the modulus of the comp composite along that direction. We believe that by using a 3D printing technology, we can orient our uh, nano filler with high stress application. So in summary, we have proposed uh, a method for improving current orthotics, orthopedics by the use of 3D printing, which is a time efficient process, customizable, and we can increase the strength by using a composite, which is strong and reduces material cost. The orientation of this composite may also aid in, in the material properties. For our design, we decided on a nylon, also known as polyamide material, for our design. Polyamide is a commonly chosen 3D printing material, and it, as it has good layer-to-layer -layer adhesion, and it's also very comfortable due to its rigid yet flexible mechanics. Polyamide is also a high melt temperature material with high temperature for decomposition. It is a tough material and it is resistant to abrasion, which makes it ideal for robust everyday use. These strengths of nylon can be further enhanced by the use of a filler material. Nanocrystalline cellulose is an economical, eco-friendly material which is composed of cellulose found in a variety of plants. The nanocrystalline cellulose are extremely high strength nano rod materials which can be integrated into the polymer matrix such that they increase the overall properties of the composite. The small size of this filler also helps in that it doesn't affect the, chain, the macroscopic properties of the material such that it's still suitable for the 3D printing platform. Its integration with nylon is also helped by the compatibility between the two materials. The hydrogen bonding between the nylon and the NCC favor dispersion such that when the NCCs are embedded in the nylon matrix, they remain dispersed. The initial design was chosen using a nylon six polymer as it is one of the most commonly used types of nylon. Nylon six and NCC composites have been made in the past using a solvent casting technique by which the nylon 6 is dispersed in a solvent along with the NCC, which is then, then the solvent is evaporated out of solution, leaving behind a well-dispersed nanocomposite. This was the proposed method of dispersing our NCCs in nylon. The nylon 6 was later found to present challenges in later stages of 3D printing of the material. The morphology of the nylon 6 is not easily altered into exact conformations, which resulted in troubles with the 3D printing. This resulted in a transition to a new nylon material, nylon 12. This material is used heavily in 3D printing applications due to its ease of processability. The, the nylon 12 does not disperse as easily into solvents. This resulted in a transition in dispersion technique. The dispersion technique was changed to a melt compounding method. The, the melt compounding is a safer and melt compounding is a safer and cheaper platform by which to disperse the NCCs. So in summary, nylon 6 was originally chosen for our nanocomposite, however the absolute necessity of 3D printing compatibility resulted in the switch to a nylon 12 material. This material was chosen for its ease and processability, and as a result of the solvent dispersion issues, a melt compounding technique was chosen to disperse it. Melt compounding 
displays advantages on many fronts compared to solvent casting. Melt compounding is safer, faster, and a less complex process, such that solvent casting, which uses corrosive solvents, is not necessary. The final method is an economical method and safe extrusion technique using an extruder with two screws for high shear mixing. This method was employed for the mass production of our nanocomposite. Mechanical testing was performed on the sample to observe whether the addition of a filler would decrease the impact strength as has been seen for other NCC composites. During impact testing, standardized IZOD bars are formed by injection molding, upon which they are um, notched to create an IZOD bar. They are then subjected to a pendulum swing, which fractures the material, and the loss in energy of the pendulum is associated with the structural properties of the material. NCCs are suspected to reduce the impact strength of material by lowering nylon crystallinity, introducing defects into the material. Flexural tests were performed to quantify the success of our nanocomposite in improving load bearing ability. Forces necessary to deform an injection molded bar are recorded such that flexural strengths can be calculated. To determine the optimal composition of our NCC polyamide composite, we did a sweep of polyamide to NCC weight ratios and performed flexural and impact tests. We saw that there was significant increase in flexural strength. The impact test suggests minimal, if any, decrease in impact strength. This is a good indication that the NCC has successfully been dispersed into the nylon matrix. High variation in the impact testing results is likely due to defects introduced by the IZOD preparation method using injection molding, which has high residency times at high temperatures. As our final product, we decided on a 3% NCC polyamide based off of a cost analysis of the improvements in flexural strength as compared to the amount of NCC that was required to produce the nanocomposite. Based on the mechanical testing results obtained, uh, there are some strong conclusions that can be made relating to the material cost. By comparing our composite with a pure polyamide uh, alternative, which could uh, be sufficiently put up to the same stresses, we can determine the difference in material requirements and deduce cost savings. We've determined that a 3% NCC by weight composite race may consist of 9.5% less material, which corresponds to 3.6% less percent less uh, cost. Similarly, a 10% NCC by weight composite uh, could consist of 10.2% less material. However, the additional NCC content uh, has an increased cost of 4.7%. Thus, our 3% composite offers the best overall improvement in cost reduction through material reduction and is what we selected for our 3D brace construction. Thermal testing was also performed on our nanocomposite to confirm the presence of NCC and that it was not decomposing through the processing of our nanocomposite. Results from thermal gravimetric analysis concluded that there was no significant loss in NCC due to our processing. Differential cal scanning calorimetry was also performed to look at the melt characteristics induced by the introduction of NCC. The introduction shifted the melt temperature of our composite by two degrees, which is not going to affect any of our processing at the 3D printing stages of things. With all testing of the materials properties completed, we then moved on to construction of the prototype race. A patient's arm was scanned using 3D scanning by which the 3D model of the brace was constructed in a 3D environment around the patient's arm. This resulted in a brace which conformed exactly to the customer's dimensions. This method improves upon current custom orthopedic brace designs which use multiple physical methods of measurement. The final step in the fabrication process was the 3D printing of the brace. 
Our bulk nanocomposite material was remelted and fabricated into a filament which is suitable for the 3D printing process. This filament was then used to construct the brace model layer by layer at 0.3 millimeter resolution, resulting in a brace which is high com conformation to the patient's arm. Looking back at our customer requirements, we have managed to address the key parameters to improve upon current orthopedic solutions. We have developed a composite that will be able to provide adequate support at joints. The stronger material also allows for less material usage for the same strength, resulting in a smaller, lighter brace, 3D, printing, 3D printed for the customer. 3D printing as a manufacturing method allows for more accessibility and reduced lead time, providing the customer with a supporting brace in a time efficient manner. Now having said this, there are a number of things that we noticed in the initial testing and prototype uh, fabrication stage uh, which must be addressed. Um, first off, the available bench scale filament extruder was unable to produce a uh, filament of consistent diameter. This is not appropriate for 3D printing. Uh, for future steps, we look to uh, investigate potential commercial uh, filament extruding techniques or equipment. Uh, next, as mentioned previously, uh, inconsistent impact strengths were observed. Uh, these results pave a path for further investigation into the NCC dispersivity uh, through uh, transmission electron microscope investigation. Next, uh, the resulting prototype demonstrated uh, poor conformity in some areas of the finished product. Future work will involve high resolution 3D scanning and 3D printing technologies. Uh, alternative we thought of to this would be an investigation uh, using a 3D printable silicon gel to enhance uh, the conformity between the skin and bracing layer. Lastly, there are a number of testing, a uh, number of tests which we did not get a chance to do due to time and equipment constraints. These include uh, resistance to water and odor, which would be required uh, tests to bring the product to the market. At this point, we'd like to give a number of acknowledgments for those who helped us along the way. We'd like to thank our consultant, Professor Leonardo Simone, and his lab group for their consultation, uh, lab space and materials, and assistance in demonstrating lab equipment usage. We'd also like to thank uh, MSK Orthopedic Center for their consultation regarding orthopedics, and we'd like to thank Felt Lab for their help with 3D scanning. Lastly, we'd like to thank our sponsor, uh, Cellyforce, who sponsored us with their supply, a supply of uh, NCC. And we'd also like to thank Jen Coggan for her assistance in scheduling and material acquisition. Lastly, we'd like to thank you. And at this point, we'd like to open up the floor for questions. You mentioned that uh, uh, with 3D printing, you could uh, align your uh, cellulose fibers. Yes. So what, what's the principle? Why then? So the principle is you can kind of compare it to logs flowing down the side of a river. And as the logs flow in the direction of the river, uh, they will eventually meet the side of the river and they will directionally orient. We're predicting that the stress applied by dragging the printer head across the surface of the print bed will cause a directional orientation. This kind of technique's actually been used on the macro scale already for carbon fiber applications in uh, injection molding, where they, the mechanism by how they inject into the mold causes a directional orientation in key areas. And such a blind uh, fiber would be better than the length This application would be specific for uh, areas where directional alignment would be ideal. Um, we believe that having directional alignment within uh, the lateral components of the brace would provide a better uh, structural strength, uh, a better resistance within that direction. It may not be applicable for all applications, but we believe that it has a niche application. Other questions?